and we've learned a ton over uh, the last couple of years of, of, of developing in synergy. And you know, a lot of that shows up over here on this DER ribbon where we have uh, lots of applications and uh, we're, we're trying to consolidate things. But uh, uh, lots of different ways to, to try to understand what's going to be happening with generation. <clears throat> so ultimately, what are we trying to do? Well, there's kind of two areas. You know, how is this affecting my system day in and day out? And that comes down to something like this single day analysis. And so it's a single button push. That's our goal here. You know, this is your model. We need to run your model and give you useful information. And so I've got two substations here. I've got a total demand. And this is what I was doing yesterday afternoon. And you know, looking at this kind of thing. With, this is in July for my system. And we've got uh, the, uh, the green curve here is the uh, demand on the system dipping down because of this uh, PV generation here. And uh, we've got a, a battery system, a one megawatt battery that's running down here. Uh, I've got my wind turbine turned off. We can model that as well. And so all these things impact. And this, this chart's getting a little busy. Um, we, we have been told correctly, and what we're trying to do is shift away from just fixating on PV and looking more at just DER in general. And uh, so, got some extra lines in this chart, but you know, the bottom line is this is my system with and without um, DER. <clears throat> and we can run this over, uh, over uh, any, any months, uh, different day types. We can come in here and, and let's run this thing for a, a single year. I don't know if we have PD charts on this one. But uh, so this is a model over uh, several months. May to September, and uh, here we go. So this is the uh, PV impact on, on the demand. This is going to be averaged over those four months, and the same kind of thing, longer period of time. <coughs> so the drivers behind this, one that is very important that gets neglected um, a lot of times, um, as I travel around and. and uh, go to different different events is loads and there needs to be some sort of load representation in there that you as an engineer can can uh, rely on so as I was saying before the break it doesn't need to be perfect but it needs to be an engineering model something that you understand that represents in general how your customers are behaving and it's up to you what kind of detail is in there but you know one of the tools is customer class curves <clears throat> but another tool that I recommend if you don't have time of day modeling in your system is to use feeder demand curves. So if you go into a meter like this, and we go in here and we say, okay, I want to use a profile. So this is my feeder meter right here. And I want to use a profile. Now we've got this thing where we can actually have the months of the year put into this profile. And this data, I'm sure, is available to all of you. you probably have it on your desktop now, or if not, you can easily get to it. So any feeder in your planning area, you've got hourly demands for the last year, maybe multiple years that you can pull in. We've got importers, so that if you've got this in the spreadsheet form, it's easy to get it into Synergy. And so now, with this activated, <coughs> your whole feeder is going to follow that curve. So with customer class curves, you're typically going to have those set up down in the sections, so that you're going to have different variations in different parts of your feeder. The loads and things are going to change. With the feeder demand curves, the whole feeder is going to move together. So all the loads are going to move at the same time, the same way. So that's not as good, but it's, it's better than having no representation at all for the loads. And it's, it's easy to get to the data. It's easy to import into Synergy. And so you can be up and running probably you know, in a very short time. What Ron Howard says, say, 12 minutes be up and running and uh, doing this kind of modeling in synergy. So I, I recommend that approach. That way you can start dealing with PV and what's going on. And then it's, it's going to be more of a process, a progression at your utility to implement customer class curves. You know, there's some art around that and some, some methodology that you as a planning team kind of have to get together and say, how are we going to do this? 
And uh, so that's a, a bigger deal, something that you want to have a, a longer term plan in place for. So, so Larry, if I do have customer class curves and, and all that constructed, but they really don't reflect what I want in my models, can I just not load them and then do this? That's right. That, that would be the ideal way to do that. Yeah, so the question is if you have both, you can, you, you can just mm -hmm. not load the customer class curves. And if you have a meter and you check that, uh, that option in there to use this, it's actually going to override the customer class curves. Okay, that's even better. So now yeah. I don't have to tell how a different equipment database right. to load without the curves. So that's right. Perfect. But it's a, uh, it, it's better, you know, it, it's, uh, it's difficult because we've got to figure out how to bring the two together because we do have clients that are doing both. So, and, and both are really there. You want to have the customer class curves to kind of reflect what's going on down in your feeders. But if you have, maybe you've got, put a lot of effort, you have solid customer class curves, you set that up on all of your loads, it's still not going to match your feeder demand curves. And so we've got some really, really interesting stuff that a California utility did. And, and there's a, a good match, a good part of some days of the year, but some parts of the year they get way out of whack. And so what we've got to figure out is, okay, how are we going to bring these two together? Feeder demands. They're changing over time, and the customer class stuff is changing over time. <clears throat> we can bring it together now with load allocation, but uh, you know you might as well uh, you know set your laptop and aside and take a vacation for a week because it's going to take a while to churn through all the hours if you're doing an 8760 that way. So <clears throat> the the pressure that we're under is this stuff has got to run fast, <clears throat> and uh, the hosting capacity things that I'll show you in a while. Um, client had a, a model that was just under 5,000 sections. It was taking 21 hours to do a, a full year. So every section, every hour for a full year was taking 21 hours. Now we're down to about 12 minutes. So it's, but, but trying to get the demands and the customer class curves to match up, that's very intensive. So, but it's, uh, we've got to do it. We've got to figure out how. Does somebody else have a question? Yeah. The, Meter profile um, in your sample model that is there. Is, is, is there one of those Excel sheets loaded as the, an example? Yes. That would be really helpful to send to other people. Okay. I know that sample model is just has a lot of information in it, right? Right. Yeah. So our sample database, and this this does get saved with the model. Okay. The customer class curves are part of the warehouse. Okay. And. Uh, but these feeder demand curves, they're actually in the meter table in your database. So, they, so if you've got, you know, a lot of you have thousands of feeders, you're going to have a lot of data, but it should be fine. Um, and then to import those, uh, all right. I definitely want to make sure I cover this, but not now. But uh, on the, uh, the four driven, there's a spreadsheet importer, and there's a meter demand curve right here. So. That spreadsheet is, uh, is something, if you've got a spreadsheet form, you can have lots of feeders in the same sheet, we'll go and pull the feeders that you have loaded off of that. I've, I've got to cover this sometime today or tomorrow, and I'm pretty sure it's in, in the schedule somewhere, but don't let me forget this data lake stuff. That's a super big deal. <coughs> okay, so uh, the time-bearing nature of loads, you've got this feeder demand approach that uh, is, is, is very useful. So now the model will change over time with the loads. And then on the DER side, if we go into the toolbox and look at this concept wizard, this is just a little gadget that just kind of helps, helps us understand it. And you can use it for your managers or other folks to kind of explain what's going on. <clears throat> There's a spot in the, if you hit the power pole and the preferences, there's a spot where you put in your latitude. And uh, this thing is set to 40 degrees. And where are we at now? Like 45, 40, something like this. And it is, uh, we're in October here. So this is what we could expect the irradiance to be. And so we're calculating this based on your latitude and the, the orbit of the planet, the tilt, the little wobble that the Earth has, and all that kind of stuff goes into these. I think we're using a certain humidity and 
such. So anyway, these are theoretical curves, but it's solid stuff. It's uh, you know a good model for irradiance. And uh, so this time of year, you know, we would expect about 450 at, at lunchtime, or that's going to be watts per meter squared or suns. So about about half the sun. All of the generators in Synergy, we simplified this. Everything that's PV related, we assume it's rated for one sun. So if you say it's a megawatt, a one megawatt generator, what we're saying is, okay, if that thing gets hit with one sun of irradiance, it's going to produce one megawatt. So that makes it very easy for us to take our PV generators and just have them follow this curve. So that's how we're getting this thing, and that's why it's you know kind of a nice smooth curve here. You can have a, uh, a collection of these irradiance curves. So if I go into my warehouse, there is a global irradiance. This is always going to be there. So if you're, uh, if uh, you know, if you've got, if you go in and delete global irradiance out of your database, and Synergy restarts, it's going to put this back. And these other ones you can add. So you can see I've got some heavy suns, some different ones. You can add as many of these as you want. You can swap them in and out to do what ifs, um, those kinds of things. You know, what if it's a very cloudy season, things like that. You can pull it, pull them in the synergy. And, uh, but the global irradiance here, it looks just like that uh, concept wizard tool. And if you want to set this curve to your latitude, you just click this uh, generate irradiance curves button. And then it just calculates those based on the latitude you put into the settings. So out of the box, Synergy is going to have probably a Carlisle, Pennsylvania latitude in there, 30, 30 something, 37 degrees, I think. And so you put your own in, and it's going to shift these curves and raise them up a little bit. Now, so this is what's being used for the uh, generation modeling. So uh, let's go take a look at a, at a generator here. Uh, I'll find a spot here that's got uh, let's add a section out here, and I'll put a generator on it. So I'm going to add a section, stick a generator out here. And we've got three types of generators. Now, Three installations. We have one, one generator model, one type of generator really, but we've got three ways it could get modeled. One way is a standalone generator, like uh, an IPP type of thing. You've got a large customer that's uh, or a, a large standalone facility. You know, it's a it's a <coughs> purpose for being there is to generate power. So solar farm, those kinds of things. You typically need to take those and drag and drop them onto the model. So. Drop that on there. I've got the symbol here. And if I go into the editor now for the instance, <coughs> here, we recommend that you override this in all cases. Put the rated output here. So in the warehouse, for that generator type, there is a rating in there. So for my IPP solar array, there's a value I can put in the size. But it's better to just keep this general and you come into the instance like this and put in the size. So let's make this, uh, let's make this two megawatts. Like that, and we're gonna put in uh, rated KW. And I'll turn off my reports and run a load flow and look at the results here. And so my output power is, I've got 2,000 KW on, on the output of this thing. A lot of folks, model their PV this way, and it's perfectly fine to do that, to come in and just set the output levels on these. Um, you can use a multiple editor to uh, turn these off and on. You can go to specify output and put in some different value, 60%, something like that, and the, the multiple editor works. There's global settings to turn them all off and on. You can come over here to the growth tool and set up profiles for you know, different what ifs and things like that for generators. And so it's an effective way to do it. Um, you're, you're in control. And if your system, if you're looking at one generator, if your system just has a few, that's completely fine to do it that way. <coughs> but 
it's not going to work well over time. So uh, if I go <coughs> rated, rated KW output on this, and just to show you how, the, how this is going to work, I'm just going to select uh, this feeder and sub right here. And if I go in here and run the uh, single day analysis, turn on my reports, go back to a single day, and I look at my uh, PV generation. I think I've got another generator on there. So the, uh, see how this thing is starting at two megawatts. So how could I have two megawatts of generation at one o'clock in the morning, right? So there's another big generator somewhere I didn't see. But, so that's because that one generator that I put in, I just said, rated output. And so soon as you doesn't care what time of day it is, you're in, you're in charge. And so you said you want rated output, it's gonna give it to you no matter when it is. So this is gonna be running at uh, Alaska somewhere, right? Where it's daylight all the time. So, so that's the drawback is if you're setting these things up 